You know, you've heard me say so many times that in ancient Hebrew, there's no word for coincidence. Well, today, it's not a coincidence that you're watching because we're going to talk about one of the most important times on God's calendar, the blessing of the windows of heaven being open and breaking every family curse. All of that today, God is going to change your life. God has a calendar. Matter of fact, one of our gifts to you today is a biblical calendar. And many of you know this, but perhaps you don't know this, that the biblical calendar, when God is preparing all the blessings from the kingdom of heaven to your life, doesn't start in January, but actually starts in September. It starts right now for you. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. But when God says, is there not an appointed time? In Hebrew, that word appointment is moadim. That on God's calendar, God is God 24-7. We understand that. Every moment of every day, God is God. But in saying that, the scriptures say, call upon the Lord when he is near. Now, what does that mean? God is God 24-7, every moment of every day, God is Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Sitkanu, Jehovah Mekadesh. The miracles that you need, the miracles that Jesus paid for when he shed his blood seven different times, those miracles are available every moment of every day. But on God's calendar, at certain times, God's anointing, God's power, God's miracles are stronger on those appointed times than the whole rest of the year. Now, right now, we are in, well, let, let, let me be real honest. We, as you know, we, we, we film these a month or so in advance. So while you're watching this, right now, we are in the month of Elul. The month of Elul is the blowing of the shofar. For 30 days up to the time of Rosh Hashanah, we blow the trumpet in Zion and we sound the alarm. And I'll explain why. Now, as you're watching this, we're, we're at the very end of the 30 days of Elul and then 10 days of Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur. And God spoke to me this morning. I knew that I was coming into the studio to talk to you, and we would be at the end of blowing the shofar. And God spoke to me and said, everyone that's watching today, go outside and blow the shofar for them. So I blew it for you. Now, let me show you what happens. On Rosh Hashanah, the Bible says that God will open the book of blessing, and he'll look to see what kind of blessing will be released into your life according to... Now, we're saved by grace. We understand that, right? We're saved by grace, not by works. But we're rewarded according to what we've done or we haven't done. So 30 days up to Rosh Hashanah, we blow the shofar to wake us up, to make sure we're doing something. We're, we're, we're being a blessing to the nation of Israel so that we don't miss what God has for you for the whole rest of the year. Now, I'm, I'm going to say this real quick, and then we're going to get into more of it. So for 30 days up to Rosh Hashanah, on Rosh Hashanah, which happened last week, God opens the book to look to see what you've done. Have you been a blessing? Is the world a better place today than it was to yesterday because of you? And so he, he has us blow the shofar. He's, he's sounding the alarm. Wake up. I'm about to reward you. So get something done 
And that's what Aliyah is all about. That's, that's what we're doing for Israel. Get something done so I can take what you've done for the nation of Israel, multiply it, and bring the blessing of God that no one can steal for the whole rest of the year. So 30 days up to Rosh Hashanah, God opens the book. Then he gives us with Rosh Hashanah and two days in Yom Kippur. There's another 10 days, seven in between. Rosh Hashanah is one, Yom Kippur is two. That's three plus seven is 10. But watch what happens right now. And that's why I'm excited that you're watching. On Yom Kippur, God not only seals your blessing, seals it that no one can steal your blessing, but on Yom Kippur, God is, he does this every moment of every day, but on Yom Kippur, which is what you're watching right now, God not only prepares to release the blessing into your life, but he breaks every curse that has been trying to block the blessing on your job, on your business, on your family, on your home, on your children. Of all the appointed times, Yom Kippur and Feast of Tabernacles, where we're at right now, is the most important time in all of God's calendar. You know, we talk about three times a year you come before the Lord and you don't come empty-handed. On Passover, about a third of the Jews worldwide would come and bring their first fruit offering. Now, they would make sure a first fruit offering got to Jerusalem, but many times because they're so blessed because of this offering, they send a representation of their company, of their family. The same thing on Pentecost or Shavuot, the same thing, they, about a third would show up. They would send somebody with their first fruits. But on this, from Yom Kippur to the Feast of Tabernacles, everyone would come because they would say, we cannot miss this blessing because this is, this is the ultimate window of heaven that's being opened. This is the time. God is ready right now. He's preparing right now to release in every area of your life the blessing of God. He's ready to seal it but he's also ready to break every family curse. You know, we say in the world, like father, like son, is there a curse in your life? And, you know, we don't talk about that much in Christianity. We talk about the blessing of God and the grace of God, absolutely. But you have to first, have you, have you ever wondered why, you know, why am I not seeing the breakthrough in my home, my business, my finances, my family? The reason is, is because most people do not understand that cursed is he that hangs on a tree, that Jesus didn't just take our sin, but he took our curse, and that blessing, that miracle is released more today than any other time of the year. Now, think about Genesis chapter 12. God said, I will bless those who bless you, Israel, and I will curse those who curse you. Now, when we come back, we're going to talk about the breaking of the curse. We're going to talk about the seven places that Jesus shed his blood. The blessing is ready. The curses are going to be broken, but God can only bless us on what we do. I will bless those who bless Israel. Tiz and I, our family, are seeing blessings of God like we have never seen before. It's, it's absolutely amazing. Matter of fact, we just, we just received what looks like a life-changing, a life-saving miracle. And we'll talk about it more when we'll actually know for sure in the next couple weeks. But it's literally curses being broken and blessings being released. When you send in your first fruit offering, you're going to save people's lives. Literally, when we bring Jews from places that are experiencing anti-Semitism in a way that the world has never seen, it, your, your first fruit offering is, yes, it opens the windows of heaven 
so that God can pour you out such a blessing. It rebukes the devourer. We'll talk about that. It, it, it cancels debt. It blocks the enemy from stealing your blessing. But the devourer doesn't just steal your financial blessing. The devourer steals your joy. It steals your health. It steals your, your family, your children, your relationships. This offering, this first fruit offering is the most important offering you will ever give for the rest of the year. You'll see on, on this calendar, on God's calendar, the biblical calendar, your new year. You don't, you don't need to wait. You can't wait till January. Your new year begins today. During this season of Sukkot, also known as the Feast of Tabernacles, the Lord is going to use your first fruits offering in two very special ways. First, you'll activate the promise and miracle from Malachi 3 that God will open the windows of heaven and pour you out a great blessing of abundance. But there's even more. He'll rebuke the devourer from coming against your life, your finances, and future. Secondly, your offering will be used to save Jewish lives from the dangerous effects of hate and anti-Semitic persecution. Your gift will be used to provide the airfare, immigration costs, and initial living expenses to help Jewish families experience a new beginning in their homeland, Israel. With your First Fruits gift of any size today, we want to say thank you by sending you this one-of-a-kind biblical calendar for your home or office. It contains all of the important Christian and Jewish dates through December 2020, and each month displays a beautiful photo of a holy site in Israel. For those of you who can support Project Aliyah with an offering of at least $100, we also want to include this inspiring coffee table book with full color photographs and descriptions of the many notable landmarks in the Holy Land. It's a spectacular volume that matches the calendar and will be a treasured keepsake for years to come. With your First Fruits offering of $375 or more, we'll include this amazing One New Man metal art sculpture. This unique piece has been created exclusively for Larry Huck Ministries and represents your love for Israel and the fulfillment of Bible prophecy of Christians and Jews coming together. Your generous First Fruits offering today of at least $750 will fund the average cost to bring one person home to Israel. To say thank you, Pastor Larry will include this magnificent Lion of Judah Yemenite shofar. It's a high quality 30 inch horn made in Israel that is handcrafted from an African kudu. It's embellished in silver with this stunning lion head design representing the Messiah and is bundled with all of the other resources already mentioned. And now, a special offer from Pastor Larry for first-time donors to our ministry. For all of you that are first-time partners, first-time givers, we want to put this into your hand, unveiling ancient biblical secrets. What does it mean when he comes with healing in his wings? What does it mean to break the curse? This gift is our way of saying thank you for helping us do what God's called us to do. Please call us today at 800-978-8546 and support one of the greatest charitable projects you could ever take part in. Our helpful operators are standing by right now to help you. So please call us at 800-978-8546. If you prefer to give online, simply go to our secure website at LarryHuck.tv and choose your level of giving there. Or you can always mail your gift of support to the ministry address on the screen. Please accept our sincerest thanks for whatever size gift you're able to sow. Together, we are saving Jewish lives, fulfilling biblical prophecy, and you are positioning yourself for an outpouring of blessing that God promises through your first fruits offering. Thank you so much for your faithful support. We look forward to hearing from you today. Now, let's rejoin Pastor Larry. You know, you think about what God said in Genesis chapter 12, which is the beginning, and we'll teach on this later. It's the Avos. It's the father of all other blessings. What does God say? Concerning you and Israel. This is, this is the birthing of all the miracles that Jesus paid for. He said, I will bless you 
when you bless Israel, and you know, w- with this with this uh, symbol of the one new man, the cross and the and the uh, star of David, uh, and the platform, I'm sure our announcer told you is in the shape of the nation of Israel. Do you understand that when you make a stand and you let people know that you are standing with Israel as a Gentile, as a Christian? As a Jew, when you're standing with the nation of Israel, you are fulfilling Bible prophecy. And when you fulfill Bible prophecy, God will fulfill prophecy in your life of bringing the blessing of God into every area of your life. Now, I want to get in on breaking family curses because that's what's taking place. Breaking every curse. That's what's taking place on Yom Kippur. But I, I, I want to share something with you. Most of you know that Tiz is going through some health issues. And, and it looks like we're 99% sure on the report that she has received literally a miracle, a miracle, just like Lion did. You know, faith, faith is, is not that there, there aren't any battles. You know, I think a lot of times Christians think, well, if I have faith, or, then I don't face anything. God, when Israel was coming out of the Egypt and into the promised land, and the ten spi- or the spies went in and spied out the land, and ten spies came back and said, there's giants in the land. God never said there wouldn't be giants. But he did say that you in everything you face are more than a conqueror. And then he tells us the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty in God. This morning, I told you that I got up before I came in to talk to you and I blew the show far for you. I sounded the alarm. Now, ancient Jewish wisdom tells us that when we blow the show far, the enemy hears that you understand that you are part of the army of God and the enemy flees. It's kind of like, it's, it's a terrible illustration, but it's kind of like you watch the old John Wayne movies and here comes the cavalry and, and the Indians have the wagon train surrounded and they, they hear the, the horn of the cavalry and they realize, man, here comes the, the, here comes the people, they're gonna save them and they flee. That's what happens spiritually when you blow the shofar. That's what happens when you save someone's life, when you give the aliyah and we take your first fruit, we take a first fruit offering on your behalf to the nation of Israel, to the Ukraine, to Russia, to wherever, and save a life, the enemy flees. Now, I blow this every day during the month of of Elul. And then from Rosh Hashanah to right now, I blow this every day because it's a spiritual weapon, just like anointing someone with oil, just like lifting up your hands and praising God, just like sowing a seed to receive a harvest. It is supernatural. Somebody asked me in my office after church on Sunday, they said, Pastor, after Rosh Hashanah, after Yom Kippur, while Tiz is still going through her, her, her treatment, will you blow the shofar? Absolutely, because in the spirit world, we are reminding the enemy and I'm reminding my own spirit that greater is he that's in us than anything that can come against us. Now watch this, we're right now, and, and it's not just limited to this, but do you have a generational curse or a family curse in your life? And so, well, Pastor, how do I know? Well, in my life, my, there was um, alcoholism in my family, uh, addictions in my family, poverty in my family, uh, anger and violence in my family and not just with men, but with women, not my mother. My mother is a a saint. But when I got saved, God forgave me of my sin, but I learned how to break that generational curse. I learned how to break the curse. Remember when they came to Peter or Jesus said to Peter, who do you say that I am? Peter's answer was, you are the Christ. 
In Hebrew, the word Christ means the anointed one, the burden removing and the yoke destroying. Most Christians have the burden removed. We've asked Jesus to forgive us of our sin. We've asked the Father to forgive us of our sin. But most Christians are still trying to get the harvest of joy and finances, and they haven't broke the curse. When Jesus said, I am the Christ, or Peter said, you are the Christ, Jesus said, on this I'll build my church, and the gates of hell won't win anymore. Where did this come from? This came from God's calendar today, Yom Kippur, when they walked into the Holy of Holies, they sprinkled the blood of the Lamb on the Holy of Holies seven times. How many times did Jesus shed his blood? Seven times. So the blessing, went, this is why we bring the offering. The offering is ready to release this blessing in every area of your life, in the garden, in his, in his uh, um, uh, whipping post, on his head, crown of thorns, in his hands, in his feet, in his side, went to the gates of hell, stomped on the devil's forehead, bruised his heel, took the keys of the kingdom of heaven, life and death. And Jesus said, when you understand this, the blessing of God is ready to be released. That's why Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, and the first fruit offering is the most important offering. But not only was the blood sprinkled, then they came out, they placed their hands on the second goat. The first goat, the first lamb, forgave the sins. The blood of that forgiveness was sprinkled seven times. Then they came out, placed their blood-covered hands on the second lamb, on the second goat the scapegoat, and confessed every curse. When we come back, we're going to break every curse. When you send in this offering to save someone's life, to fulfill Bible prophecy, to bless the nation of Israel and Jews around the world, get ready. The window of heaven is going to release such a blessing, but it's going to rebuke the devourer also by breaking every generational curse. We'll be right back. During this season of Sukkot, also known as the Feast of Tabernacles, the Lord is going to use your first fruits offering in two very special ways. First, you'll activate the promise and miracle from Malachi 3 that God will open the windows of heaven and pour you out a great blessing of abundance. But there's even more. He'll rebuke the devourer from coming against your life, your finances, and future. Secondly, your offering will be used to save Jewish lives from the dangerous effects of hate and anti-Semitic persecution. Your gift will be used to provide the airfare, immigration costs, and initial living expenses to help Jewish families experience a new beginning in their homeland, Israel. With your First Fruits gift of any size today, we want to say thank you by sending you this one-of-a-kind biblical calendar for your home or office. It contains all of the important Christian and Jewish dates through December 2020, and each month displays a beautiful photo of a holy site in Israel. For those of you who can support Project Aliyah with an offering of at least $100, we also want to include this inspiring coffee table book with full color photographs and descriptions of the many notable landmarks in the Holy Land. It's a spectacular volume that matches the calendar and will be a treasured keepsake for years to come. With your First Fruits offering of $375 or more, we'll include this amazing One New Man metal art sculpture. This unique piece has been created exclusively for Larry Huck Ministries and represents your love for Israel and the fulfillment of Bible prophecy of Christians and Jews coming together. Your generous First Fruits offering today of at least $750 will fund the average cost to bring one person home to Israel. To say thank you, Pastor Larry will include this magnificent Lion of Judah Yemenite shofar. It's a high quality 30 inch horn made in Israel that is handcrafted from an African kudu. It's embellished in silver with this stunning lion head design representing the Messiah and is bundled with all of the other resources already mentioned. And now, a special offer from Pastor Larry for first-time donors to our ministry. 
For all of you that are first time partners, first time givers, we wanna put this into your hand, unveiling ancient biblical secrets. What does it mean when he comes with healing in his wings? What does it mean to break the curse? This gift is our way of saying thank you for helping us do what God's called us to do. Please call us today at 800-978-8546 and support one of the greatest charitable projects you could ever take part in. Our helpful operators are standing by right now to help you. So please call us at 800-978-8546. If you prefer to give online, simply go to our secure website at LarryHuck.tv and choose your level of giving there or you can always mail your gift of support to the ministry address on the screen. Please accept our sincerest thanks for whatever size gift you're able to sow. Together, we are saving Jewish lives, fulfilling biblical prophecy, and you are positioning yourself for an outpouring of blessing that God promises through your first fruits offering. Thank you so much for your faithful support. We look forward to hearing from you today. Now, let's rejoin Pastor Larry. I want you to understand once again, this is the time. This is God's appointed time. The windows of heaven are, are open. When you send in your first fruit offering to save lives, God has the window of heaven opened up. But look what it says. Everybody in Malachi knows that return unto me. That's this time right now. It's the, it's the season of, in Hebrew, teshuvah, of returning. How do we return? God says in tithes, and in offerings. We all know what the tithe is. The offering is this is what opens this window. It's only open for a very brief time, then it's closed. But and God says, I'll pour you out such a blessing. But let me read it to you in Malachi uh, real quick, because most people stop there. It says, I'll open you windows heaven, I'll pour you out such a blessing. And then we read that there will not be room enough to receive it. I don't have time to teach all this. Most of those words in italicized. It really reads in the original Hebrew, but that's not enough. The windows of heaven's open. God's ready to pour out the blessing. But then he says, that's not enough. What's not enough? Read the next verse. He said, I will rebuke the devourer for you. This is the only way that the enemy is destroyed when we break the curse. Now you're ready to receive the greatest blessing your life, your family, your finances has ever seen. We're experiencing this, and you're gonna experience this right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I break every curse. I break every family curse. I rebuke the curse of poverty. I rebuke the curse of addiction. I rebuke the curse of failure. I rebuke the curse of health. I rebuke the curse of sickness and disease. And I release through the windows of heaven God, multiply according to your first fruit. Multiply this blessing. Father, they are saving lives through this offering. Save their life in every single way. And we give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' name. I've got much more to teach. This is an appointed time. I'm Pastor Larry. I love you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.